Before we officially start this video, I need you all to know that the Jonas Brothers are reunited and they have a new song out. 11 year old Dom is fucking freaking out. The new song is kind of trash. I don't listen to music like that, but it's so trashy. I love it and I am... <sighs> hey guys, what's up? It's Dom. Today we are here with my January and February wrap up. And we're doing that because all I did was read a series in January, so it would be less mundane if I combined the two months. So, in these past two months, I've read a total of six books, I think. I feel like there should be a seventh, but I really can't remember what the seventh is. I'm going to jump right in once I, like, get out my notes, just because I have a feeling this video may or may not take a while, and I saw that my battery is not doing well. Also, you may have noticed there is no March TBR in the title. That is because... What do you mean I have zero books? I don't have zero books. Whew. That is because... Um... I don't know what the fuck's going on in March. I have a lot of stuff going on. It's spring break. I don't know how many books I'm going to read in spring break. Also, I'm taking a class on the Holocaust. Um, we're supposed to be rereading the book Thief. We're supposed to be reading the book Thief. In my case, I would be rereading it. But she was like, oh, if you read the book Thief, I'm going to force you to read a different book. I don't know what that book is yet. We will see. So yeah, no TBR, but I do have six books to talk about, so we will get started on this wrap-up. So the first book I read in 2019 was Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. This was a reread because Map of Days came out, but I remembered absolutely nothing from the series. That's a lie. I remembered the first book the most. Second book, okay. Third book, I remembered nothing. So I was like, mm, I should probably reread the series if I want to read the fourth book. That's what I did. Um, if you saw my Goodreads... Do you stalk my Goodreads? I don't know if you do. But if you saw it, I had this book at five stars originally. But unfortunately, I put it down after the reread. Um, in short, it's more of a three-star book, but I think I gave it four stars out of nostalgia. If you don't know what this book is about, there's Jacob Portman, whose grandpa has just died, so he goes to the island of Carnholm, which is in Wales, to go see the house his dad grew up in during World War II. And then he meets peculiar children. Wow! Okay, that's in the title. That's really all I want to say for the summary, because I don't really want to spoil this. Yeah, th three to four stars, which pains me to say, and I know this is, like, beloved. It pains me just because I did love it so much as a kid, and then, like, the story has been told through snapshots. There are snapshots in the book. I don't really know how to describe it, but they're old photos that Ransom Riggs himself found. He incorporates them into the story. It's actually really cool. Some of the photos are creepy, but not all of them. And the reason I turned this down is because the romance in this book is a lot more rushed than I remember it being. I mean, maybe, you know, when I'm a teenager, I don't care if romance is rushed, but now I do if it, I do care. A lot more rushed. Jacob and Emma kind of just got on really, really well out of nowhere. And I just can't imagine dating someone that was your grandpa's girlfriend, but that's that's besides the point. Jacob, like, believing everything right away was really rushed, too. He kind of just believed. I don't know. Maybe it's just because of, like, my anxiety. I would have dissociated so bad if I suddenly entered a time loop and, like, you're stuck on September 3rd, 1943 over and over again. Like, what? And then there's kids flying. There's kids that have a bee in his stomach. There's someone who's strong. There's, um, Emma whose hands go on fire. I don't know. I thought he believed everything a little bit too fast. Also, the one, the major, like, thing wrong, well, I shouldn't say wrong, the major thing I had with this book, though, was that Jacob has no personality, which sucks to say, but I don't know, I thought he, I thought he was lacking. Another thing I didn't really like is that he just, he isn't there. It looks like he's looking in a box and the characters are in the box, but he's not, you know? But... The story was interesting. It is an interesting concept. Ransom Riggs' writing is not my favorite, like, at all. I think it needs some work. But, you know, it, it works for the genre and the age group it's towards. Pictures are cool. I know it takes a lot to find those pictures, which is another thing. I cannot tell... Mm, no, I'll hold this off for future books. So we're going to end it there. Yeah, so four stars. My final opinion's four stars. Should be three, but I'm too nostalgic to give it three, so four. So then, since I reread the series, the second book I read in January was Hollow City by Ransom Riggs. I'm not going to say what this is about, because if to, in order to give a summary of this book, I have to spoil Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, and I'm not going to do that. I will just say this one got 4.5 out of 5 stars. These characters, 
it, of Miss Peregrine were a lot more developed. In the first novel, it was really, really difficult to tell them apart if I didn't know better. But they're a lot more developed. You could see their distinctive personalities in this. Except for Jacob. Jacob got better for me, but still, it read like... It read as if he wasn't there and he was just on the outside telling us a story about people. You know, I don't... I don't really know how to expand on that, but that's just how it read. Pictures were cool as always. You meet some new people in this. You're always going to meet new people in these books. And that's all I'm going to say about that one. It's really hard to talk about a series without spoiling it. That's all I'm going to say about that one. So then therefore, the last book I read in January, which I have with me, because I had to bring it to school because I was not finished with it yet, is Library of Souls by Ransom Riggs. And just like with Hollow City, I am not going to say what this one's about because I would have to spoil both Miss Peregrine and Hollow City. But this was supposed to be the conclusion of this. So, so right now, this is the conclusion of the original trilogy. He's writing another trilogy in this series. That's why the fourth book is out. But this was the original conclusion. And I have stuff to say about this book, and now I can't remember what it is. My thoughts on this book were the same as Hollow City. The characters are even more developed, even though they're kind of hardly there. But just, you can see Jacob and Emma's love for them. Um, Emma was a lot more developed. Jacob... He's getting there. He's not so much on the outside anymore. He is kind of within the story now to me. Pictures are still cool. Lovely ending. I actually like the ending to this novel so much that I'm kind of upset he's going on. If you know, because you know, like, there's just some things that just end on a good note where if you keep going, I'm, I'm worried he's going to ruin it. Kind of like with Maximum Ride. Those first three books were great. Then Jacob, not Jacob, wow. Then James Patterson kept writing and I, mm, the original trilogy of Maximum Ride is great. I can't stand the rest of the books. I'm worried about that for Miss Peregrine's Hope for Peculiar Children. But this wasn't bad. 4.5 out of 5 stars. I have like old lady back right now. Now we are starting with my February reads, which is A Map of Days by Ransom Riggs. And this is the fourth book of the Miss Peregrine's Children series. I don't know if that made sense. I guess it's called Peculiar Children. I guess that's what the series is called. It's really hard to go into this one too without saying what happened. I will say it, ha it happens in America and you meet the American Peculiars. And the reason the American Peculiars are so different than the ones in Europe is because Europe is very organized, everyone has their shit together, whereas in America, as America does, we don't got our shit together. So, they're exploring that. Um, I wrote, not wrote, well, I made a whole video, like, book talk review of this book, so I really don't want to repeat myself. I will put it somewhere in the description or above, I don't really know how any of that works. But, yeah, I don't really feel like repeating myself. I don't even remember what I gave this book. I actually gave this book five stars. I feel like it should not be a five star read. Four stars the least, but maybe not five. I don't know. But go watch my video review and I will talk about some of the qualms I had because I did have a few, but I also had a lot of positive things to say. The ending to this book really fucking pissed me off. Well, not the very ending. Like, Jacob was so sweet in this book, you know, but all the other characters really pissed me the fuck off. I'm going to leave it at that. Go watch my book talk. So then for the next book of February, this is finally a book outside of anything Ransom Riggs has ever written, and it is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I finally read this book. It's taken forever. But this is about a girl named Star who witnesses her friend get murdered by a cop. Her friend was unarmed. Black kid getting murdered by a cop. And it's it, it deals with what's happening today. I gave this book four out of five stars because it... I was emotional. I should not have been reading this in the public spot. I don't, it makes you think about stuff that's going on. I knew a lot of these problems were happening. Like growing up in Chicago, I saw a lot of this on the news. I was noticing it from a young age. Didn't really sink in until the... Not the Trayvon Martin case. I think I was too young for the Trayvon Martin case. It was around that time in Ferguson, Missouri, I think it was, where someone by the name of Michael was killed. That's when it finally sunk in for me. Like, my school had protests. We had a day where everyone wore black and then didn't talk. There was a gathering in, like, the Memorial Garden of my high school. And then now that I'm in college, I'm meeting people who haven't really had a lot of experience with this. So this book, I don't want to say it was, like, nothing new. Because obviously I'm learning things about these problems every day. It was just interesting to see what I've been seeing in real life put in book form. I love Star. Star's a sweetie. You feel for her. I love her family. I love her dog. Her dog was hardly mentioned, but I love dogs. I love her friends, minus the white friend. But all her other friends were there for her. Her boyfriend was there for her. Angie Thomas makes you angry at the right time. She makes you happy at the, the right times. That's what I really like. The mood shifts worked. 
when there's a bunch of sadness, she puts in comedic moments, and it just works. The reason I gave it 4 out of 5 stars, though, is because it is written in a dialect. I have a very hard time with, like, first-person dialect or, like, first-person told in the form of a child. But this is not in the form of a child, but trip me up. I understand why it was done, and it was done, it was theoretically done well. It was just hard sometimes, but that's really the only qualm I had about it. I really highly recommend this book. So then the last book I read in February was All But My Life by Gerda Weisman Klein. Yeah, I think that's her name. I don't actually have a physical copy, it's on my Kindle. This is a Holocaust survivor memoir. I had to read this for my Holocaust class because they all read Survival in Auschwitz by Primo Levi, but I've read that before. So she's like, read this book instead. So I am. I gave it 3 out of 5 stars, and I know that's kind of bad for a memoir, but a little bit about Gerda. She was able to live in her home in Poland for a while before moving into work camps. She never went to a death camp or extermination camp, however you call it. She spent a lot of her time in work camps, and then she was also a part of the infamous death march to Czechoslovakia, and she is obviously a survivor of that. I just gave it 3 out of 5 stars because of the very, very fancy writing. I actually had to write a novel, not novel, wow. I actually had to write an essay about this book, and I think that's what ruined it for me, because I was reading a question. One of the questions was, like, how do, does the writing novelize the book or not? And I think that like tainted how I read this book because I was I was purposely looking for something to make an argument about. And my argument was that her writing is very, very fancy. So rather than reading, ooh, bus, rather than reading like a memoir, it read like a novel. See, there's long, long pages of dialogue. And I'm, I don't know, whenever I see long sections of dialogue and memoirs, I'm like, I highly doubt you actually remember that. Ugh, you know, and then, I don't know, like I feel kind of bad if you're giving it 3 out of 5 stars. I wish I read this on my own time and not for school because she gets the point across. It is emotional, like she wants it to be, like I've teared up plenty of times throughout this memoir. It's just my essay really fucking kind of killed it. Plus, I had to read. I had three days to read this. Actually, I had less than 24 hours to read this book and then write the essay because I waited till the last minute. But I gave up. I was halfway through the book and I was like, you know what? No, I wasn't halfway. I was quarter of the way through the book and I was like, I'm just gonna write an essay about the first quarter of the book. I got an A, so I guess it was fine. It is emotional, and the fact it is another perspective because she never did go to a concentration camp. It was just work camps. You meet her family, you meet her friends, and her friends, oh, that's when I cried. And in just the fact she was on a death march, because I haven't read a lot of memoirs about death marches, and there are an interesting concept, and there was one metaphor about the little match girl that actually kind of killed me. It was so sad. Wow. That's the last book I read in February. So, I will say for my TBR, it is to finish Ordinary Men by Christopher R. Browning. I'm reading this for the Holocaust class. And he's trying to explain the action of perpetrators, like specifically the Nazis, but specifically the Reserve Police Battalion 101, and the final solution in Poland. This is very interesting and does prove the world's not black and white, but, but it's kind of creepy at the same time, just knowing what some of these men did. But I'm not going to go into full depth until my March wrap-up. So because I don't have a TBR, that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really don't know what else to say besides that. Hopefully I can get more reading done in March. It's, I started a lot of books in February. It's just that they're all like textbooks, so they're not going to be finished for a while. There's another book I'm reading for this Holocaust class that I found out we don't really have to read. But I spent $30 on the Kindle version, so now I'm just like, I gotta read it now. And then I'm reading an animation crash course, and then history of animation, because I'm taking a history of animation class, and then I'm taking an archaeology class, so I have an archaeology textbook. Yeah, and I'm talking quietly now because people just came home, and my window's open, so this doesn't actually work while I'm talking quietly. But it was cold, or er, not cold, well, it was hot in here. I can't speak English today. And I'm rambling. But yeah, that's the amount of books I read. Go listen to the new Jonas Brothers song. I almost said album. Go listen to the new Jonas Brothers song. Hopefully they go on tour because y'all know I'd be on that shit real quick. I'm gonna go now. Ciao a tutti.